Hello, animators! Today we have an interesting one. Now, I'm not supposed to influence the voting in any possible way, but I secretly wanted this tutorial to win the second it got voted. Now, a lot of my tutorials include particle spawners, but before there was no possible way for me to explain exactly what I did because particle spawners are a massive topic on their own. Now, the suggestion has finally been voted, and today I give you guys the particle spawner tutorial. Now, I do have a few old ones, but let's face it, they're old. Plus, the particle spawners have gotten a huge change in the latest updates. So, if you like my videos, you can show me some love by dropping a like and hitting the bell for more content like this. And with all this out of the side, let's jump into the particle spawner. So upon importing them, you get this. This is all they do by default. If you really want to customize the particle spawner, you have to click open editor. So you have a whole bunch of options here and don't get scared, we're gonna cover all of them what they do. So first of all, you have the option to spawn constantly. If you take this off, you can spawn all 300 particles at once or clear them as you wish. If you take on spawn constantly, it will summon 300 particles per minute. I'm gonna raise this number up to like 900 so now you're gonna have a lot more particles and that is mostly it for this one now the next one we have is spawn in a region around creator so if you click this now the particles will summon in this region mess with the radius change the shape to be a cube or a box where you can customize individually x y and z size so we could technically have particles summoning in a line like this that is the bounding box where the particles will appear next we have the bounding box by default it's set to ground and the ground is zero in a particle are going down like I did right now they're going to hit the ground equals Y so if you can increase this the ground is now up here because I increased it to 26 basically you determine the ground where the particles are so they can bounce off the ground they can interact with it uh, you can have the bounding box be the spawn region which means they're now only stuck in this little square they determined up here which is their spawn region you could have a completely custom bounding box you can say okay they're only going to be visible in this little box down here you can customize all the values or click this relative to the creator so now this bounding box is right here. I've made this little bounding box. Basically, customize exactly where you want the particles to be bounding in. They're trapped inside this box. Or you can have no bounding box at all and have them be completely free. If I just undo the speed change, because we're not there yet, but I'll get there. Hopefully you understand these upper parts here. Then we have the destroy particles option. You can destroy the particles when the animation is finished. That is, when this animation here comes to an end, the particle is going to die. Because it's not displaying any sort of images, and you don't want an invisible particle to be there consuming your RAM. So it just kills it when the animation is done. You could kill particles if the amount of particles exceed 200. So let's say if you have 15,000 particles appearing, you see the particles stop at 200 because the 200 is the limit. When the particles reach the 200 limit, it's gonna start killing them. So 200 is the max. You can increase this limit if you want to. Like you can mess with the limit all you want. Or you can kill the particles at a time after spawn. Let's say after two seconds, each particle that appears is gonna die after two seconds. You can have a random value. So the particle is gonna die one, two, three seconds after it spawns. So each summoned particle is going to die somewhere from one to three seconds after being summoned. You can kill the particles when they hit the bounding box, which of course is now not shown. Let's enable this custom one. So now the particles die when they touch the bounding box. That's also a feature now. Increase all this. Now see the particles die when they hit the bounding box. I don't know why these are going crazy. Oh yeah, they're being summoned here, but they're quickly transported to the bounding box. This might be a bug, but I'm here to explain the mechanics, not jump into the bugs. That is all for the upper section. Now, let's go down to the bottom section. You should have it like this until you click the particle number one. Then you will open up all the different values for the particle number one. So we can name this particle Speef, just because of the meme, which is dead. I shouldn't have done this. And now you can change what kind of particles you want this to be. So you can have a sprite template or a sprite sheet. Let's go for sheet and it will open up this old particle mechanics, which basically you all know from before. So drag, select which frames you want the particles to be playing. Change the frame width, change the frame height. So now you have bigger or lower squares. Basically, that's it. Uh, star frame end frame mess with these and as you see it changes automatically you can change the animation speed so it's gonna be faster or it's gonna be slower it can also be random so some are from 5 to 10 those random values are great because it gives you a random value from 5 to 10 have more diversity in those on the animation end you can either stop the animation loop the animation so now they're constantly going to loop or reverse it so it goes in and back out I'm gonna keep it by default now and let's let's hop on to sprite template because I have some new ones you can change the pack so you have you can change a texture pack and have different particles in there. So you have a texture pack, this is a way to go. You can go for a template, which is going to be generic, big smoke, bubble pop, effect, basically all sorts of Minecraft particles. Down here, you have the ones with infinite frames. Okay, if I just destroy the particles after two seconds of being spawned, let's keep this on spell, just because. Uh, we can have the template of a still frame.
frame to now they're only being still. Use a random frame to now a random frame is going to be still. I want the still frame. You can have reverse animations so it goes from the other end of the animation instead of going in the right direction. There's your animation speed and those settings we covered right before. So those are the particle options and how to choose the right particle. But if you have, let's say, a block inside of your animation, you can delete it from the timeline. It only has to be in the library. If there is a block in your library, in the kind value, you have the third option, which is the grass block. So you can have your particle summon grass blocks. Luckily, I have them die every two seconds, but by default, this is 10 seconds. You're gonna have a lot of grass blocks in here. Just saying, be careful of that. So let's go with grass blocks. So there's a bunch of settings here, but for now, I'm going to change the scale to 0.3 so we can work with these much easier. And now come back to the upper one. So the first option is the launch angle. The launch angle determines in which direction the particles will be summoned, will be launched as they start. So if I put the speed to 0, 0, so now they summon completely still, except the rotation, the rotation is still going. The launch angle doesn't do anything because the launch angle speed is set to 0. If we increase that, they are randomly going to summon in all directions, just like before. But what's the point of this? Well, let's take off the random here, and now they're all summoned in the same direction. This is the launch angle. You determine in which direction it will launch. So let's go for the X angle 60. You've determined this angle. Now let's go for the Y of 30. Actually, let's go for Y of minus 60 or something. Now they're going in this direction. Let's go for the Z of 17. You determine the axis in which they're going to summon. You can also randomize this. So minus 5 to 43. So now they have slight variation in where they're going. This is the launch angle. In which direction they will launch. Of course, each value can be randomized. So you can have the correct speed or rotation somewhere from the first value to the second value. So somewhere in between those two values. The speed as well can be randomized. So some of them are going to be very slow, some of them are going to be very fast. So have more diversity once again. Then the add speed. Uh, let's say we're going to add two speed every second. So now it's gradually going to speed up. So every second it's going to add 2.5 to the speed value right here. So all your particles are going to speed up. You can also go to the negative and now they're starting off this way and it's slowly turning them around in the negative direction. So basically this because every second they get minus 1.25 of this value. So they're going in the opposite direction. This value can of course be randomized as well. Now the multiply speed is a bit different. If you have a speed of 10 and you multiply it by 1, you still get 10. So as long as this is 1, it's all going to be the same. But if I increase this, individual values will get multiplied. So the ones that are slow are going to speed up by a little because 1 times 2 is 2, but 50 times 2 is 100. That's a big difference. So the ones which are already fast are going to be even faster and the ones that are slow are going to be slightly faster. Whereas the add speed increases all of their speeds at once, regardless of the speed they had before. I hope you're following me so far. If not, feel free to pause the video and watch it again. The little pause icon is your best friend when it comes to watching these tutorials. Because you can listen to it over and over until you actually understand what I'm talking about. I don't want anyone to be left behind. I want you all on my side here. On top of that launch angle and their initial speed, you have the speed all together. So now it all just got a bit more jumbly because on top of the launch angle we had before, now we're applying the X, Y, and Z speed, which is randomized somewhere from minus 20 to 20 on all three axes. Let's put the speed of this launch angle back to zero. So now the launch angle is completely disabled because it has no speed from there. Let's ignore the launch angle for now. You can combine the two and I'm gonna show the speed individually. So that is the same as before. Let's tick off randomize and let's go for an x of 20. Now all the particles are going x 20. If we randomize this from minus 20 to 20, they're going somewhere from minus 20 to 20. I mean this is pretty this is pretty logical. Their x value is somewhere between minus 20 and 20 but their y and z are still zero. Let's randomize the y as well. So now they're going randomized left and right and randomized up and down between minus 20 and 20. Let's have it randomized from minus 20 to 70. They're still going down but they're going up way more than they're going down. This is basically the randomized option from minus 20 to 70. It's the same with z but let's not add z for now. The add value is the same. We're going to add some z value every second. They're all slowly getting the z value. The multiply is the same as before. Let's put the add z to zero and let's increase the multiply z all the way up 
nothing is going to happen because their z is already zero. If you try to multiply zero with nine, you still get zero. If you add the z, they will all get the value. If we have some z value, they will slowly start to pick on because now they have z value and they can multiply the value. Now the z value is somewhere between minus 1.5 and 5 and the multiply z is all the way up. So some of them are going to be multiplied in that direction, the ones that are going on minus, the ones that are going on plus are going to be multiplied in that direction. Both the add and the multiply values work the same way across all dimensions. Across the speed, rotation, scale, alpha, everything. All the attributes work the same way. Now rotation. We have rotation and rotation speed. So rotation determines how the particle is going to be summoned while rotated. So if you put this to 0, 0, 0, all of them are going to be summoned facing upwards. You can't tell because they're too fast. As you see, all the blocks are summoned, rotated the same way. And this value can also be randomized like everything else. Rotation speed, though, determines how fast it's going to rotate. Let's put these two to zero. Let's have the x rotation speed be somewhere from zero to 700. And now only the x is going to rotate like crazy, somewhere from zero to 700. Let's put both of them to 700. The x rotation is going crazy, while the others don't do anything at all. The add values are the same as before. Multiply values, the same as before. Let's add some minus y value, but slowly going to start rotating faster and faster, you know what I mean? There's a lot of interesting effects you can do this way. Okay, back here, we have scale. So the scale can also be randomized. So the blocks can be somewhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, let's say. So we're gonna have some smaller ones and some bigger ones, as you see right here. And the scale change, let's say it's going to change 0 0.25. It's going to add 0 0.62 every second. So now they're growing all the time. Or we can go back into the negative and they're going to lose 0 0.5. 37 every second. So now they're slowly shrinking. This can also be randomized. So some of them are going to be shrinking slower, some are going to be shrinking faster, you know? You have infinite power, yo. Now the alpha, again, some of them are going to be transparent. You can also randomize this somewhere from 0 to 100. Also alpha change. Let's say they're going to lose 10% of their visibility every second. Let's increase that. This is what you can do with the particles. And this is also randomizable. We have the color options. So let's say they can all summon red. Or let's randomize this. They all summon somewhere from red to dark red and you can also have mix color gradually and they're going to mix into black after three seconds of being summoned. Let's change that to one second. In one second after being summoned they're going to turn black or you can make a change into either black or brightly blue. So they're going to change in one second after being summoned but this time can also be randomized. So 0 0.3 seconds and two seconds they're going to change the color. So some of them are gonna change color faster, some are gonna change color slower. You really have a whole bunch of power here. At the end, we have the third section of the particle spawners where you can go for use spawn region or not. So now the spawn region, this giant square, is not being taken into account. So it's only summoning in the particle. You can use the bounding box or not. So this red square we determined, we can use that or not. Now it's not being used, now it is being used. I don't know why you would use this, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Now we have two more values, which is bounce and orbit tractor. If you tick off bounce, you won't see much changes now. Add Y to like 2.7. So now they're going through the floor, right? Let's determine the ground bounding box to be zero. As you see, they're now bouncing off the ground. This is that bounce. So you can make them not bounce, so they're just gonna stay onto the ground. You can make them bounce, so they bounce back up. And the bounce factor determines how high up they're going to bounce. So one is 100%. So they're going to bounce off to the same height they started from. If you go for two, they're going to bounce up twice as high as before, you know? If you go for a bounce factor of 0 0.3, they're barely going to bounce, but still just enough. You can't see with the naked eye anymore because it's too, ah, oh, yeah, there we go. We can see some of them now. And the final thing is orbit attractor, which doesn't do anything for now. Let's take a look at why that is so. So if you click on the particle creator in the timeline, you have this tab called particles here, where you have additional attributes. There is a Steve in the animation, and I want my particles to be dragged towards Steve. So let's click on the particle creator. First of all, you have a few options here. You can either stop spawning particles or spawn particles, basically. Uh, you can freeze them. So let's go to 10th frame and freeze. They're freezed, but they're still being summoned. You have to take this off. So let's go back. The particles are now being summoned, and as they hit at this point, they freeze and stop spawning particles. So all the particles stop in midair. It's gonna stop spawning and unfreeze the particles. 
So let's see the effect we've made. Now they're spawning. When they get to this point, it stops spawning and freezes them. And when I get to this point, it unfreezes them and spawns them again. So basically, you pause the particles, uh, clear all the particles. So when it gets to this point, all the particles get cleared, but they're still being summoned. You can also make them sub spawn. So then basically, all of them disappear. You can have a custom seed. So a custom seed determines in which pattern the particles are going to summon. It's just a random number, kind of like with the Minecraft world generation thing. Uh, you would use this if you want to get exactly the same amount every single time. And finally, the attractor, which you can now determine to be the Steve or Steve's individual body part. So let's go with Steve's head. The Steve's head is now dragging the particles behind it. And it's dragging them because we determined the particles to orbit the tractor. If we tick this off, the particles are going to stop. They're still orbiting the tractor. That's not right. Yo, I think this is a bug. If you tick this off, it's not supposed to orbit the tractor, but it's still doing that. <laughs> All right, the attractor is the head, and you can also mess with the force. So now they're, they're going to be dragged to the head much stronger. And also what's good about this is if I move the Steve, the particles are going to follow him. All the particles are now focused around Steve's head. And we can make for some pretty cool effects with this. For example, let's see how I made the effect with Divided. Let's go for a sphere, radius down, and I'm gonna add this grass block here, and this grass block is going to be invisible for now, but it is here, and we know it is there. So let's delete all the particle keyframes here, and just go for the first one. The attractor is going to be the grass block, and now they're all being dragged towards the grass block, and the force is going to be stronger. Uh, the amount of time, it's gonna be five seconds, so they're gonna disappear after five seconds of being spawned. Now this grass block is going to be visible, so I can see where it is. These particles need to be summoned in a specific way. The speed minus 300. Oh yeah, there we go. So now the particles are being summoned in that direction, but they're still orbiting this attractor. So if we increase the force, this grass block needs to be changed. So it kind of forms a circle around it. This is what I want to do. So the particle is now circling around this grass block. And then at the end, I animated this feature. So let's uh, increase the force gradually. So it's going faster and faster. And at the end, I said no more attractor and the particles just flew out. And also stop spawning particles. So the effect we got was like this. Particles are now orbiting this invisible grass log. Let's make it invisible. So that's what I didn't divide it. The particles are now orbiting the grass log and their force is gradually increasing here and here it just said no more tractor and stop spawning them. You can also mess with the speed, launch angle, and all the individual attributes. I hope I've cleared out exactly how particles work and what all you can do with them. Because some of these values are a bit more complex if you don't put your head into it. And also my explanation doesn't help with my English and stuff. But I sure hope I've cleared stuff up. And if I didn't, pause the video and rewatch it. Because knowing these particles, especially with what all you can do with them, click this video here, the useful stuff, man. And it uses particles. Particles are the best. So that was it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed and mostly I hope you learned a thing or two. This is an important tutorial, okay? So thanks for watching and until next time, stay sharp.